the 30-week series on Believe, I'm beginning to think, act, and be like Jesus. It's been a journey. God has given us much to think about, and much to apply to our walk with Him. Many things. Those first ten weeks before Christmas, we were looking at thinking like Jesus and how we could incorporate that into our life and how we could think like Him. And then we, we looked between Christmas and Easter at being like Jesus. How we could be more like Him. And then we began after Easter looking at the being. Those virtues and those things that who we are how we live out what God has called us to. And those first five were the, the vertical. We looked at love, joy, peace, self-control, and hope, and our vertical relationship with God. And then we began to look at our horizontal relationship with others around us. We looked at patience, at kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and today we look at humility. Humility is one of those things that's kind of hard to define, kind of hard for us to sometimes wrap our head around. But Paul W. Powell once said, Pride is so subtle that it can't, if we aren't careful, we'll be proud of our humility. When this happens, our goodness becomes badness, our virtues become vices, we can easily become like the Sunday school teacher who having told the story of the Pharisee and the public and said, Children, let's bow our heads and thank God we are not like the Pharisees. You know, sometimes we're kind of like that. But Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. There were two ducks and a frog. They were living at this little pond and they were just good friends, and they played together, and they did things together, and it was just really an awesome threesome. But the pond was starting to dry up, and the duck said, we're going to have to move on. And then one of the ducks said to the other duck, but what about our friend the frog? How are we going to take him with us? And so they thought about this for a while, and they finally come up with the idea that they would take a stick and they would put it between them, between their bills, and they would hold the stick and the frog would grab a hold with his mouth and they would fly to the next pond. And they thought, this sounds like a really good idea. And they took off and it was working. And a farmer noticed the trio going by and looked at his wife and he said, I wonder who came up with that idea. And the frog said, I did. Thus illustrating, pride goes before the fall. <laughs> you know, sometimes we might be a little bit like the frog. We want to be prideful. But Paul says in Philippians, he's writing the church of Philippi, and he says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. In 1884, King Humbert of Italy was awakened in the night. He was told that there was an epidemic of cholera that broke out in Naples. The next day, the king was scheduled to go to Monza for a big reception in his honor. This was a big event that had been planned for a long time. He got up the next morning, he telegraphed the host of this message. Banquet in Monza, cholera at Naples, I am going to Naples. If you don't see me again, goodbye. When the king arrived in Naples, he was welcomed and greeted by the common people because most of the rich people and those of influence had fled for the fear of their life. But the king stayed, and he worked for weeks 
to check the plague and relieve the sufferers. His example brought out others to help serve the people and to help put check, to check the move of the cholera epidemic. But then one day one of his ministers said, should it, ought you not return to Rome? And he said, you may go if you like. I shall remain until Naples is cholera free. And he did just that. You see, when a king descends his throne to serve others, that is a picture of humility. Being willing to descend the throne to serve. And isn't that what Jesus did? Isn't that what he did when he came from the throne of God? That he descended to the earth? That he became fully human and walked the face of the earth, touching lives? And giving us hope for eternal life. For the Christian, humility means life is not about me. It's about God and others. Solomon sums it up this way in Proverbs 15.33. He says, Wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord, and humility comes before honor. And humility is also the opposite of arrogance. See, arrogant people walk into a room and they want to be known. They want everybody to know that they're there. A humble person goes into a room and they want to lift up the others and not anyone know they're present. Jesus tells the story when people were jockeying for the best seats. He tells the story about going in and seeking the lowest seats and then being invited to the better seats. And then he says, For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. You look at Scripture, wisdom and humility are consistently connected in Scripture. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Proverbs 11, 2 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. That's what James tells us in 3.13. And then in Numbers 12.3 it says, We find a humble person mentioned. Now Moses was a hum very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. You hear that? Moses didn't go before God about himself. It was always about the people. He went to intercede for the people. That's why he kept going before God. But then God also humbled people in Scripture. It's the first time we met Saul, he was overseeing the stoning of Stephen. He is trying to destroy the church, and he's going about that. But then Paul Saul was blinded for three days. And he became a very dedicated disciple. And then he wrote to the Roman church. He said, For by grace given to me, I say to every one of you, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. So as you think about humility, as you think about being humble, what difference does this make in the way that we live? What difference does it make? There's a slide, a couple of slides coming up. Just as little reminders for us. Well, first one, knowledge of our identity in Christ. That's one of the things that makes a difference. It makes a difference. Remember back. Several weeks ago, we talked about our identity being in Christ. Not being in self, not being in our job, not being in a name, not being in a profession. Our identity is in our relationship with Christ. 
Jesus' death provides security now and into the future. Luke reminds us in Acts 17, 28, For in him we live and move and have our being. For in him we live and move and have our being. So, one of the things is our knowledge of our identity in Christ. And then second, we have a desire to elevate and esteem others. <clears throat> With identity in Christ, we have all the resources needed to live out the great commandment, to love God and neighbor. All of the resources needed. Everything that we can use to elevate and esteem. As we grow in that relationship and become more humble, we feel no threat in placing others above us. You see, if we're placing others before us, we're being humble. Just like Mary was telling the kids, just by opening the door, you're humbling yourself. And then third, our relationships are about the well-being of others. Once we esteem others above ourselves, then we care for people the way Jesus would. Serving all of those we are in relationship with. Serving those we are in relationship with. Do you hear that? We no longer use others as a means to our own end, but we serve others. Paul said it like this in 1 Corinthians 10, 24. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. And fourth, we have a deep sense of caring for people. As Jesus walked the highways and the byways of Israel, he had an amazing ability to be able to find those in need. You remember Zacchaeus, Nicodemus, the woman living in adultery, the woman with the bleeding disorder. No one escaped the notice of Jesus. He was always seen. Social status had no place with Jesus. When he was teaching them, when he was ministering them, he simply had compassion. Compassion for anyone in need. And we're called to the same. Wednesday's upper room, every week in the upper room on Wednesday, they have a little study at the back for that. And that's what the men are doing. And it was talking about that very thing, about how we see people. And we put a we put a title on them as homeless or mental or whatever it might be. But see, Jesus, he, all he saw was people. And that's what he calls us to see, is to see people. And then fifth, a desire to reflect Christ in all things. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And when we live that out daily, when we live that out from sunup to sunset, we find, we find ultimate humility. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and live that. First Peter 5.5 5 says, All of you, clothe yourself with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. You see, a humble servant draws people to Christ. A humble servant will draw people to Christ. And Jesus is our example. And so as we go on into the, into the world and the life of the church and into our daily lives, live this out. Go back and look and, and believe. Because it wasn't just for 30 weeks. This is a lifestyle. You put it in your life. Take it with you. Live it out. And begin to think, act, and be like Jesus. For we are called to be His humble servants. Might we do that?